like, I caught on about the baby already. Oh, yeah. We've already gotten our jokes that way with it. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, cool is here. Um, So what are you guys doing? Looking for We just beat <laughs> this juniper right here. Uh -huh. And now we are looking at what kind of insects fall in here. Can you this? Oh, yeah. We're looking for caterpillars. You don't see any? None in this one. No. Yay! We got a caterpillar? Oh, oh the action's over there. Oh, the yeah, action's over here. Okay. <laughs> So that's so an early, yeah, so caterpillars have um, five to seven stages of growth. They're called instars, and they molt at the end of each one. So insects are, they have their skeletons on the outside of their body, right? So as they grow, they can't grow from the inside out like we do. They grow, and then they hit the, their skeleton, and they can't grow anymore. So they have to molt, so they shed that skin. Um, so we often age them by saying instar. So this guy hatches really small, grows quite a bit, grows a little more. So that's probably late second instar. And the big one that Kai and Steve found was a late fifth in star. Okay, look oh, how small it is. Oh He's so <laughs> cute, they're my favorite. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let me get them in the bag. Yeah, yeah, so they have, we didn't have anything green. They have yeah. a, their little black head, they hide underneath the, the Yeah, I saw it, that's why I thought it was a soft that little, part. yeah. They have a little brownish head, it's right underneath a little, they're so cute. <laughs> awesome. Nice, fine, good eye. They are really, you can see that that would look just like a little bit of juniper. And they won't move, they won't really start moving like the other ones. So you kind of have to really look around, but that is awesome news. So is this the same species of juniper we did yesterday or is it different? Um, this is also, it's a more clumpy growth habit. More clumpy growth habit is osteosperma. Yeah. So why are we putting them in the bag? Um, just collect, oh yes. Explain, Stephanie. Oh, we're, we're, putting in the we're putting them in the bag so we can collect them, take them back to the lab and rear them and see if there are any parasites in them. Um, and this one's a really cool one. This is Mariah's favorite. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and so you put some of the plant in there too? Yeah, we need some of his so he has something to eat. Um, there's some air in the bag so he won't die before we get him to the lab. I got it. <laughs> well done. All right, does someone have a Sharpie? Hey Nick, what should I label the site as? Hidden Valley. Hidden Valley. Okay, there we go. Hidden Valley and Hidden Valley. Right here. So what color are these things? They're green. Sometimes there's a, a brown one that looks almost like the twigs, and so it's very, very hard to see. And then the green ones can be big, they can be small. But we also see a lot of ants and a lot of beetles. See that little beetle right there? So that's what they should look like, yeah? Well, it depends. There are, there's a wide variety. So these, this is a noctuid towards the back of the body. So that distinguishes it from the inchworms, which are geometrids. Um, this is a real, this is a good size, really good size caterpillar. So we're pretty excited to photograph it. It's older in life. It's probably in its fifth instar, last stage of growth, fourth or fifth, um, probably fifth. So we'll want to photograph it soon because it'll soon be going into its pupa. So instar is when they shed their, their skin. other layer skin. Exactly, yeah. 
And they, do they look the same after each time you shed the shade? Are they exactly the same, just bigger? It's a great question. Actually not. It depends a lot on species. So some species will look completely different from instar to instar. So different coloring, um, different, different patterns. Different colors, different patterns. Some change. There's one species of um, Arctid, which is a tiger moth. That has, they're very fuzzy in general. That each instar is so different, you'd think they were completely different species. Color, um, hairs, it's very, very So it cool. makes it easy to age it then, because you can know how old it is. Because as what it as looks soon like. as it's known yeah. what the, spe that the species has that complex of a life history, it is. But of course, for that to be known, somebody has to raise it all the way through and photograph it at every stage. So it's actually, um, it's a really important thing to do, but... Natural history. Natu so it's a natural history component that we're also adding to. Do these caterpillars like copy each other? Like to, like let's say, one's particularly noxious that way. Uh, oh, you're noxious, I'm gonna look like you. Yeah. This type of evolution? Yeah, exactly. So high, um, not high, but really dramatic coloration is called aposomatic, which is, so the monarch butterfly with its bright orange, that's aposomatic. It has several species of copy at the viceroy butterfly, which is, um, uh, I forget if it's toxic or not, but also the, the, um, uh, the queen butterfly also mimics it and isn't toxic. So that coloration, the aposomatic coloration is mimicked. Also in larval form, I'm not sure, I mean, it definitely does happen. I don't know exactly how common it is, um, but, but it does. Now, these ones aren't really toxic. No. Right, they, they, uh, it's more, and the thing with juniper is it's, it's full of terpines and, uh, and resin, so it's more, it's difficult to eat. Not necessarily that it's toxic to eat, more that it's a digestive. This, so, how, if, can you see, can you look towards his bum? How many pairs of legs do you see? Three. No, so wait, no, that's the head. Yeah, that's the head. So at the very end, here, this will be easier. At the very end, he has, so how many pairs of legs do you see on his butt? Butt end. Is a part that's moving his head? That's his head, yep. Okay, so, so we're the other at his end. other end. Two pairs. Two, exactly. Okay. So they have, so all kind of us have an anal pair, which is at the very end of their body. Mm -hmm. And then noctuids have four pairs. They'll be easy to see on those big ones. Four pairs forward of that. These only have one pair forward of that, which oh, is why okay. they inch. They don't have as so many legs to work with, so they have to inch. This is an inchworm, geo, mm -hmm. geometrid. Oh, okay, so this is geo. And this is awesome. Early third instar, probably. The other one's probably a late second. Mm -hmm. okay. Early third. Um, and that's another early season. That's so, right. So let's okay. snip uh... Are they both geos? No. Nope. Um, one's another juniper. So this guy can go in his own bag because he's our first geo. And then this one you could add to the um, to the juniper hair streak yeah. bag. And I think you have something exciting mm. in the corner. Oh, we got three? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what is, now what is that? Oh, this is cool. Where? We should actually use, we should use this guy as a demo of not good versus geo. Is he a big oh one? Oh my gosh, yeah. I think we lost okay, him. So you can move it. Oh, no, 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 tap. I think you just squished him. <laughs> just, just drop you him in the, move the it, bag. Move, uh, tilt it a little bit. Oh no, he's stuck. He's stuck. I need no, 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 no. He's, they, um, they grab on with crochets. So they have these little hooks at the we'll end of their feet. Pull the water. No, it'll squish it. This is fine. This will get. I we can. just need to. Do you want to just drop him in the bag before he jumps off? I know, but I can't see. I don't know if he fell. He's probably in there. Okay, hey, buddy. And was that, that the was geo? The geo. Yeah. I'll see. I'll see if it's fine. He's real little. So this guy is cool. He um. Oh yeah. Boy, we hit the mother load with this beat. Yeah. Yeah, that was right on top, the tall, tall spring. Yeah. Okay. So, how many yeah. pairs of legs do you see yeah. on this guy post the anal pair? Did you get that like seated one? one two, no. Three it's hair? Somewhere here. He's here. He's crawling yeah, up yeah, this. Yeah, he's right there. So, how many pairs do you see? Oh, wow. Yeah, the and anal four. pair. And uh, then four more. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Four. So, okay. knock two versus geometric. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. And now what is this? There's a little juniper guy. Geo. Oh, there he is. Yeah. So he is in there. Pardon? Yep. Is okay. That the sap? Right here. See him? That yep. is what we're calling on something kind of inappropriate. We don't know. Oh. Not really. But we don't really know what that is. <laughs> okay. I've, that's I've actually seen a spit bug. Yeah. That's okay. spit bug stuff. There's other stuff that's a little bit less spit buggy that I think is just more concentrated spit bugs. Okay. Spit. So would we want to... Does it matter if the branch has Doesn't matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those little, those little um, plant bugs are totally harmless. That's what the adult, so there are these leaf hoppers that sometimes you'll see hopping around, little bugs that hop. They excrete that, lay their eggs in it, and it keeps their babies moist. And then okay. if you open up one of those, you'll find kind of a wet looking, bizarre little bug larva. Okay. So, so good up. diversity. You guys have three families. Lycenity, Noctuity, Geometrity. So we're okay. putting them all separate, right? Yeah. Um, we'll actually add this one to the Lycena bag. Okay. We can add this one to the, I wonder, yeah, we can add, we can do three. So we can add this three one. Three to be maximum. Yeah. So we can just start a new bag for you, so we might have a couple more. Okay. So this one will be your Noctua bag. 
This one we can add to the lacina bag. So if you want to hold this guy, I'll bring the bag over and you can okay. stick them in. And we'll just change the quantity on that, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow, this is a good beat. Nice. Good eye. So these are our lice, so lacinid yeah. in Valley Quantity 1. So we'll change that quantity to 2. Diversity grid, and he talked about that, right? That, yes, he did. Right, so that's still up in, up in, uh, still a controversy of what really is the cause, whether it's a more stable environment down there, or whether it's uh, perhaps you know increased rates of speciation in the in the tropics, or perhaps that they've just been there longer and they've had more time to uh, diversify. So that's something that I'm interested in. That's that's like you know patterns of diversity. Yeah. I'm interested in mechanism and patterns of diversity. Do you actually want to go there? I, yeah, I, wanna, I really want to go to Ecuador. So what are they actually eating um, the junipers? The caterpillars? Mm -hmm. They're eating the leaves. So the leaves are modified into scales. Mm -hmm. So all of these um, branches, these green branches, are actually the leaves just modified and laid on top of each other. So they just munch away at all that. So all the tissue they can digest? Mm-hmm. They're, they're just little the eating tubes. They don't eat the berries. Mm -mm. Okay, so it makes they're no just, difference. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. So that's actually a mark more of the um, the gender of the plant. So these plants are, as Nick was saying, they're um, they're uh, dioecious, which mm -hmm. means so a lot of so if you see a flower in your garden and you dissect kind of a typical flower, it has an ovary at the base mm -hmm. and it has the um, the style. That's the female mm -hmm. part, and that's what receives the pollen. It also has the stamens that have the po the pollen on the end. Mm -hmm. So a, a flower, a typical flower, has both male and female reproductive right. parts, right? Mm -hmm. Well, these trees, the juniper, um, the trees are male and female, just like us. Mm -hmm. So a single tree won't produce both eggs and sperm. So one tree will produce berries. Um, it will have the receptive uh, structures for the pollen, and it'll receive the pollen, and then. Um, and then it'll make the berries. So this is probably a male tree if it has no right, well, that's the ovaries ovaries few berries. The right, the ovaries fruit. become the fruit. So um, it's very possible, and I'll ask them about this too, but that when you see a tree with berries, it's a female, and then a tree without any berries is male. They are, they, that is, they, there are male and female plants, so I think that that is why. Do the caterpillars prefer the younger juniper? It's a really good question. Um, so caterpillar species specialize on ages of tissue. Some only eat young tissue, some prefer old tissue. Um, there are a lot of caterpillars. There's a whole group of caterpillars um, called uh, um, um, acontines, and they have really, really robust faces, really robust mm -hmm. jaws, and they actually only eat old foliage, and they really mm -hmm. like oak. Old oak foliage is pretty tough and leathery. Sure. Like pretty, pretty old leaves. Um, mm -hmm. And so they have really big jaws to manage that, but they won't, if you feed them young foliage, they'll die. Mm -hmm. So it, it's that strict right. of a preference. That's why caterpillars yeah. are so cool, because it's not even just host species, right. it's age of foliage. Some feed on detritus. There are caterpillars, there are several species, um, we'll probably see some of the sheet, Renias, and there's Xanclognatha too, and they only eat decaying leaves. Mm -hmm. They're like little, kind of a constant, we're always collecting degrees. new foliage, because mm -hmm. when we do zoo, mm -hmm. which is when we clean out the bags, find everyone, see if any changes have happened, we give them new leaves. Um, do you guys grow your own trees at all? Like we don't. Like we collect. We just collect from the sites. Oh, okay. Um, Nick, he was running over there. I went off the and, uh, Do male and female jun junipers do they like mate for life? Do junipers mate for life? Probably, I would say plants are some of the most <laughs> unfaithful organisms around because yeah. they just want their pollen everywhere. All of our cereal grains are wind pollinated, so their pollen mm -hmm. just goes anywhere. Yeah. Um, so they don't pair up and like you know next to each other. They don't. No, they do. They do deploy an <laughs> army to carry their gametes, though, which are pollinators. But you don't have to worry about them leaving town. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but some plants are really specific about the the insects they need to pollinate. There's a 
plant. It's called Darwin's orchid. It's in um, the tropics, and it had it was discovered. And it has this incredibly long tube, and then the nectar is at the very end, mm -hmm. and um, then it has a little pad at the top of the flower for dabbing um, pollen on. And um, this is a great example to use with your class too. You can look up photos. But they discovered the orchid first, and they were like, "What animal mm -hmm. could ever?" reach all the way down this tube. It was like, it was a foot long. Right. This flower's um, uh, Corolla was a mm -hmm. foot long. And, uh, and it was, I forget who it was that proposed, you know, I bet it's a moth. You know, mm -hmm. they were thinking birds, they hadn't seen a single bird that had that long of a beak. Um, and they set up some motion cameras mm -hmm. and they found this incredible moth, huge sphinx moth. It's, um, my favorite family moths are the sphingids and they're, uh, they fly like hummingbirds. Like mm -hmm. the, those the are different, sphinx. those are, those are Saturnias. So oh, sphinx, okay. sphinx moths do have colored hindwings, but not usually spots. Oh, okay. um, well, I have <laughs> but these are. <laughs> <laughs> well, on you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't usually reveal them, but it made sense. They actually, so they just have really long gate wings. They fly like hummingbirds. Um, and uh, and they found this. They they caught on camera this incredible hummingbird moth with a tongue that just unrolled, unrolled, and it oh, wow. long. It stuck all the way down and That's got awesome. the pollen on its head. That's cool. Super. That's found awesome. one. Woohoo! Awesome. Couldn't come back. Um, sphinx moth. All right. Good determination, good determination. It was funny oh, when nice. I was over there. Okay. I was like, I you have a left down there too. Look oh my god, me. everybody, I feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my teaching there. trolls on me. <laughs> um, Not the most like, effective hey. in the class. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the... Awesome. What does it look like? Super we were talking tall. and I was like, I found a really little one and they were like, about how little? And I was like, if this was a caterpillar, it would be about that size. And I was like, and oh wait, that is a caterpillar. <laughs> You say it's pretty small? Yeah, yeah it's really okay. small. Cool. Looks like a little, he's like a slug. A little mm. sluggy? Well, this How is many a really legs after the juniper. anal pair? Yeah, that's Ooh, what you're going to ask. That. <laughs> if it's one, it's what? Oh, look, how cute. Nice eye, guys. Wait, if it's Yay. one pair, what? What is it? <laughs> it's a geometrid. If it's more than one pair, it can be actually a number of families, but what we tend to find are noctuids. But these guys, the slug legs, Turn into these beautiful butterflies, and I'm going to show you guys a picture of tonight. But there, this is the juniper hair street. Nice. So it's um, it's a very baby of the big one that uh, Kai and them um, and Steve got. So we found a big one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>